Welcome again to a message from Mount Calvary Baptist Church in Swansea. Good morning. Soon we will be able to meet up again and those of the fellowship will likely be informed by the end of this coming week um, as to when we will have our first service post lockdown. So there's something to look forward to. This will of course change how we do these recordings. Uh, they will still be online, just they will be a bit later on in the day. Same will be with the telephone. Uh, message this will still happen but this will also be later on in the day of course you can get the Sunday morning message by calling Swansea 940446 as well as on the website mountcalvaryswansea.uk and on YouTube I'm looking at Facebook as another possibility you can find the church and me by searching for Rev Ian M Thomas as one word thanks for joining us today there is a day or week for everything these days, and that's how it is this Sunday. And to be honest, I don't take much notice of these kind of things, except at, at Christmas and Easter, perhaps Pentecost. Um, but from time to time, I'll pick up on something, and uh, if I especially like it, I would like to do something about it. And today is Sea Sunday. C as in S-E-A, the, the water. <laughs> um, and it's on the second Sunday of every July, um, and it's about helping an organisation called the Mission to Seafarers. Of course, there are other charities on the high seas. Uh, perhaps my favourite, uh, other than this one, is OM, uh, with their book fairs as well as their work in aid and relief. But today is really about the Mission to Seafarers, which is a Christian charity that started in 1856 in Bristol. The Reverend uh, John Ashley was walking along the seafront and he believed God told him to help seafarers uh, that he could see out in the ships out at sea. So he dropped what he was doing, found himself a ship and went to visit seafarers. Since that time, the mission to seafarers has sent people all over the world to watch over seafarers and help them when they are in need. What might happen to a seafarer on a modern ship today, do you think? Well, some seafarers still suffer when there are storms at sea. Today, shipwrecks happen and men and women are killed. It's very frightening to go through a storm in a ship at sea. Uh, when my brother worked on the QE2, he has pictures of storms that uh, they used to go through. And uh, though he was on a cruise ship and uh, used to this kind of uh, thing, it still looked horrendous and scary and still people got hurt. Things got thrown off shelves and uh, and so on. And of course, uh, not only passengers were getting hurt, but the crew. Crew get hurt and they get injured on board ships. And especially working ships, uh, merchant ships. And waves can throw them around, they can fall. The mission to seafarers help seafarers to get, um, get them to hospital on shore. But also seafarers can be left on their ships with no food and water, especially if the ship owner runs away. They are the abandoned and they can be left at sea for months or even years marooned at sea and only the mission can help them. Uh, this is, uh, of course, even true now when we think about the pandemic. Some ships have not been allowed to dock for over four months. So seafarers spend a very long time at sea because ships sail, they far far from their land. Um, let's uh, think about the humble tea bag. Of course, uh, I can go through the whole process of manufacturing, but uh, we get our tea bags from places like Colombo and Sri Lanka, uh, which is 7,700 miles away from the UK. And the ships have to go through many ports. They travel all this way to get um, us our favorite brew. And then they go back again, maybe with a different cargo via different ports. And because seafarers are so far from home, they cannot talk to their families very often or get to church for months on end. So the mission to seafarers can help with mobile phones, with the internet. They can arrange prayers and give out Bibles where necessary. So why do I want to uh, speak about this today? Why should we help the mission to seafarers? Well, they help uh, those at sea cope with life at sea. And later we find out that helping such agencies is what Jesus would have us do. Seafarers bring us all that we need. Our food, our medicine, our fuel. They bring fridges and TVs, they bring games, they bring toys. 
and it all arrives in ports in these great big container ships. They give us oil to drive our cars. Without seafarers, we would all suffer and be deprived of many of the things which we take for granted yeah, for our modern everyday life. So I'm going to start with a prayer. Yeah, I'll start. I mean, I've already started in a way, but let's pray, shall we? Let's thank God for the work of Mission to Seafarers in over 260 ports around the world. God our Father, we thank you for the work of the Mission to Seafarers, for the chaplains, the ship visitors, the many volunteers who give their time to care and provide comfort for seafarers, just as your son Jesus sent the 12 apostles into the world to preach the good news of the kingdom. So may the Mission to Seafarers continue that work among seafarers Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Thank you, Lord, for seafarers who work tirelessly to bring us our daily food, as well as transporting the goods of in industry and commerce around the world. Help us to remember the loneliness that they often face as they spend months away from family and friends, often with little time in port before long periods at sea again. We pray for all seafarers and their families that they will know God's love and protection. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. Thank you, Lord, for all who work in the shipping industry, for dockers and other port workers, for shipping agents and ship suppliers, for managers and trade unions. Help all those who work in the shipping industry to be people of honesty and integrity and help them as they often work unsocial hours in all weathers. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Thank you, Lord, for all who work to serve seafarers and to promote justice and welfare within the shipping industry. We pray for all missions of seafarer chaplains, ship visitors and volunteers as they visit and welcome seafarers in your name. We especially pray for those who work to prevent seafarers from being exploited and taken advantage of. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Today we remember all who are lonely, in danger or in despair, those in prison and in hospital and those without hope. We pray for all prison and hospital chaplains and visitors that they will bring comfort to those in need and hope to those who have none. We ask that you will draw near to all who are alone and that they may come to know you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let's uh, come to uh, the some passages in scripture because there's no shortage of sea stories in the bible there are plenty which tell of the challenges and danger of the sea water for many in the ancient world including the people of israel was something to fear with its destructive power and its unpredictability for many uh, the waters became symbolic of chaos which threatens order and life and there's of course the famous story in scripture which is Jonah um, and so I'm going to read the first two chapters actually of Jonah um, and uh, so let's hear what what it says now the word of the Lord came to Jonah son of Amittai saying arise go to Nineveh that great city and call out against it for their evil has come up before me but Jonah rose to flee to Tarshish from the presence of the Lord he went down to Joppa and found a ship going to Tarshish. So he paid the fare and went down into it to go with them to Tarshish, away from the presence of the Lord. But the Lord hurled a great wind upon the sea, and there was a mighty tempest on the sea, so that the ship threatened to break up. Then the mar mariners were afraid, and each cried out to his God, and they hurled the cargo that was in the ship into the sea to lighten it for them. But Jonah had gone down into the inner, inner part of the sh Excuse me. But Jonah had gone down into the inner part of the ship and had lain down and was fast asleep. So the captain came and said to him, What do you mean, you sleeper? Arise, call out to your God. Perhaps the God will uh, give a, a thought to us that we may not perish. And they said to one another, Come, let us cast lots, that we may know on whose account this evil has come upon us. So they cast lots, and the lot fell on Jonah. They said to him, Tell us, on whose account this evil has come upon us? What is your occupation, and where do you come from? What is your country, and of what people are you? And he said to them, I am a Hebrew, and I fear the Lord, the God of heaven, who made the sea and the dry land. And the men were exceedingly afraid, and said to him, What is this you have done? 
for the men knew he was fleeing from the presence of the Lord because he had told them. Then they said to him, What shall we do to you that the sea may quiet down for us? For the sea grew more and more tempestuous. He said to them, Pick me up and hurl me into the sea. Then the sea will quiet down for you. For I know it is because of me that this great tempest has come upon you. Nevertheless, the men rode hard to get back to dry land, but they could not, for the sea grew more and more tempestuous against them. Therefore they called out to the Lord, O Lord, let us not perish for this man's life, and lay not on us innocent blood, for you, O Lord, had done as it pleased you. So they picked up Jonah and hurled him into the sea, and the sea ceased from its raging. Then the men feared the Lord exceedingly, and he offered a sacrifice to the Lord and made vows. And the Lord appointed a great fish to swallow up Jonah, and Jonah was in the belly of the fish three days and three nights. Then Jonah prayed to the Lord his God from the belly of the fish, saying, I cried, I called out to the Lord out of my distress, and he answered me. Out of the belly of Sheol I cried, and you heard my voice. For you cast me into the deep, into the heart of the seas, and the flood surrounded me. All your waves and your billows passed over me. Then I said, I am driven away from your sight. Yet I shall again look upon your holy temple. The waters closed in over me to take my life. The deep surrounded me. Weeds were wrapped around my head. At the root of the mountains, I went down to the land whose bars closed upon me forever. Yet you brought up my life from the pit. O Lord my God. When my life was fainting away, I remembered the Lord and my prayer came to you into your holy temple. Those who pay regard to vain idols forsake their hope of steadfast love. But I, with a voice of thanksgiving, will sacrifice to you what I have owed, what I have vowed I will pay. Salvation belongs to the Lord. And the Lord spoke to the fish, and it vomited Jonah out upon the dry land. Jonah is a sea, sea story uh, which has its heart at its heart a great storm, one which threatens the life of the crew of a merchant vessel. Jonah 1 4 said the Lord let loose a hurricane on the ship. That's the literal translation. The passage gives us a stark picture of their fear and of their desperate efforts to avoid shipwreck. Jonah, their passenger, did not emerge from this story with honour. He has rejected God's call to go and preach to the people of distant Nineveh. And in taking ship, he was trying to escape the responsibility God had laid upon him. He, in fact, he went in the exact opposite direction. <laughs> but he perceives the storm as a sign of God's displeasure with him. Indeed, the lots cast by the sailors point in his direction and limit his options. Even at this distance from mainland Israel, he has not evaded God. Everything the crew have thrown overboard to lighten the ship has made no difference. Now he offers himself. A reluctant crew also run out of options and over the side he goes. The storm is stilled and he finds himself in the belly of the fish and heading in this rather unusual form of transport back towards Nineveh where finally and not without further grumbling he carries out God's bidding. It's a strange story in many ways as are so many tales of the sea. Um, of course, a lot of the tales I see are talk about giant octopuses and all of these kind of things. But it includes an account of three days being in the stomach of a large fish. However, there is much to ponder. The graphic picture of the destructive power of the sea prompts thoughts perhaps not just of the ocean itself, but also of many other things which threaten to overwhelm our lives. The destructive and uncontrollable forces of chaos come in many forms. It's no surprise that the famous story of Jesus stilling the storm is recalled memorably by all four gospel writers. And here's Luke's account of that. One day he got into a boat, this is from Luke 8. One day he got into a boat with his disciples and he said to them, let us go across to the other side of the lake. So they set out. And as they sailed, he fell asleep, and a windstorm came down on the lake, and they, were filled, and they were filling with water and were in danger. And they went and woke him, saying, Master, Master, we are perishing. And he awoke and rebuked the wind and the raging waves, and they ceased, and there was calm. He said to them, Where is your faith? 
And they were afraid, and they marvelled, saying to one another, Who then is this, that he commands even winds and water, and they obey him? The story reflects the disciples' experience of God, the God revealed in Jesus Christ, who alone has the power and authority to still those storms, or at least to enable us to find peace among them. Storms also come in many forms for seafarers. Yes, uh, there is the challenge of the sea itself and all the dangers that come with living and working on a moving, sometimes violently moving, platform. All too often this can lead to injury or fatality. One mission to seafarers chaplain found himself supporting two seafarers who both had to suffer leg amputations of a violent collision at sea. The mission to seafarers has a presence in 260 ports in 71 countries. In many such ports it offers hospitality, ship visiting, communication facilities and a transport service, enabling seafarers to access the oasis uh, of a mission centre in ports which are often remote and inhospitable. Its chaplains and its teams offer a warm welcome and the ability to share the good news and also to share good and bad news in life and become a resource for advice. Sometimes the crew have serious problems either at home or as a result of something they've experienced on board a ship. All too often the mission finds itself dealing with seafarers abandoned in foreign ports totally without friends, without the means to get home, without food and water and shelter. The reality and fear of piracy presents a further range of serious problems. All these and more besides can make seafarers, uh, especially because their world is hidden uh, and isolated, uh, they feel uh, in danger and, uh, and being overwhelmed. Today there are thought to be one and a half million people who work on the sea. One and a half million. Storms come indeed in many forms. The book of Jonah does more than remind us of the many storms facing seafarers. It's also a book which speaks of the universal nature of God's love. There would have been some in Israel to whom the story of the book of Jonah would have come something as a shock to them. The book tells of God's concern for the people of far off Nineveh, a Gentile city. And Jonah himself seems to have uh, found this message hard to take. Uh, there have been many, uh, not just in ancient Israel, who have seemed to convey the impression of a God whose love and commitment is to a relatively exclusive group, whatever kind that might be. In fact, a very important theme in so many chapters of the Bible is of a God who reaches out in love and compassion to all the people of the world. The mission to seafarers, with its global presence in so many diverse ports and cultures, maintains an absolute commitment to reach out with God's unconditional love to those of all nations and languages, to those of every faith and none. It does so in many ways, most of which are deeply practical, but are respectful uh, and, and deals with those things which they can feel vulnerable about. The book of Jonah speaks of God's call, and Jonah tries to run away from that call and finds that there is no escape from God. The psalmist says in Psalm 139, If I climb up to the heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in Sheol, you are there. If I travel to the limits of the east, or dwell at the bounds of the western sea, even there your hand will guide me, your right hand holding me fast. Does God not expect us to do our part? What is God's call to us? Psalm 82 Verses 3 to 5 says, Give justice to the weak and the fatherless. Maintain the right of the afflicted and the destitute. Rescue the weak and the needy. Deliver them from the hand of the wicked. They have neither knowledge nor understanding. They walk about in darkness. All the foundations of the earth are shaken. For 164 years, the mission has responded to God's call to share his love among seafarers. As it continues to carry out that ministry, it seeks to hear God's call afresh. <coughs> the Welsh poet R.S. Thomas uh, lived much of his life by the sea. 
And uh, this is one of his poems which speaks of the God from whom there is no escape, but who watches over all, uh, over us all, including seafarers, whoever we are and wherever we are. And this is called The Other. There are nights that are so still that I can hear the small owl calling, far off and a fox barking miles away. It was then that I lie in the lean hours awake, listening to the swell born somewhere in the Atlantic, rising and falling, rising and falling, wave on wave on the long shore by the village that is without light, and companionless, and the thought comes of the other being who is awake too, letting our prayers break on him, not like this for a few hours, but for days, years, for eternity. Oh, man. There's much about the story of Jonah that we can take and learn for ourselves. So let us hold on and cling to him. Follow him when he tells us to go and do something because he knows best. And the experience of God and his discipline, uh, hopefully we will learn what he has to say to us. I... I don't often uh, say we should support other societies uh, and things like this. You need to make sure that you're still giving to your own fellowship. Uh, that is right and that should be first. Um, but you can also support uh, the Mission to Seafarers by going to missiontoseafarers.org and support the work there. You'll find out more about them too there and the many stories that they have um, and they're, they're fascinating but it also gives you an insight into a world which we, we know nothing about because we spend all our time on land of course we don't, we don't even think about all the stuff that happens uh, to bring us all the things which we take for granted but we are an island state most things have to come by sea so uh, let's uh, keep them in, in prayer but if you're wanting to please give to them too uh, God bless. It's great to um, uh, I've been doing this. Of course, don't forget that um, I'm doing the devotion still Monday to Friday at nine o'clock now, just for a few minutes, uh, just to have a look at the, the daily readings which we are doing, which are also on the website. Um, and then, uh, yes, please just join me then. Great. God bless you and, uh, and hope to see you soon.